The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James and on this show we talk about the equipment found on your electronics workbench. The Element 14 community has sent me yet another multimeter. But this Multicomp Pro is different from the others we discussed in past episodes. Like many bench DMMs, it has four inputs for measuring resistance. So in this video, I show you the difference between a two wire and four wire resistance measurement. For an upcoming project, I need a small value shunt resistance to measure current. Since all resistors have a tolerance around their rate of value, I want to know the exact value of this resistor. When measuring it with the new 5.5 digit DMM, it reads 187 milliohms, but it's supposed to be 100 milliohms. Just to be sure it isn't the meter, I tried with a handheld that has fewer digits and it gave me a value of 200 milliohms. Two meters from different manufacturers suggest the resistance is higher than 100 milliohms, so it must be, right? Or is it? To explain why these values are wrong, we need to take a look at a diagram. Here's the resistor with a multimeter attached. The DMM applies a constant current and then measures the voltage drop. Ohm's law calculates the resistance based on that voltage and current. How does such a simple measurement fail then? Well, we have to consider how the meter gets connected to the resistor. Just like all wires, the test leads have some resistance associated with them. So going back to our diagram, we need to model the leads as small resistors in series with the resistor under test. This means the meter includes the resistance of the leads in its measurement. Now remember that our friend Kirchhoff says that current through individual components in a series circuit is the same while their voltage drops add up. With the two wire measurement, our meter provides a constant current through all three resistances, but it has no idea about the voltage drop across just the resistor under test. The four wire measurement method solves this problem. By adding a second set of leads, the meter literally splits the measurement into two. One set provides the constant current to develop a voltage across the unknown resistance while the other set of leads senses the voltage drop across just the resistor. By the way, this connection is called a Kelvin or Thompson connection. There are actually Kelvin test leads which look like an alligator clip, but each side of the jaw is a separate electrical connection. Now, you might be asking, why do the resistance of the second set of leads not matter? Well, they do. However, remember when measuring voltage, a multimeter has a very large impedance or resistance, like in the 10 mega ohm range. So the current through the voltage sensing leads is extremely small, small enough that we can ignore it. Next, we use a real resistor and prove that the four wire method is more accurate. Here is a one ohm resistor. Later, I'll explain why I'm using a one ohm instead of the 100 milli ohm from before. But Check this out. Measuring that resistor using the normal two wire method gets a result of 1.095 ohms. That sounds reasonable, but by adding two more wires, connecting them to the sense inputs, and switching the meter to four wire mode, the meter now measures 0.987 milliohms. You might be wondering which of those two numbers is the correct answer. Just because the four wire was closer to one ohm, how can we prove that it is the correct measurement? Well, in this setup, the bench power supply applies a voltage, the handheld meter measures the voltage drop across the resistor, and the bench DMM measures the current. The resistor under test has 798 milliamps going through it and a voltage drop of 800 millivolts. Using Ohm's law, that means the resistor is 1.0025 ohms. The two wire measurement was off by 70 milliohms and the four wire was only off by about 40 milliohms. Keep in mind that the supply method has a couple of extra error terms. However, it does prove that the four wire method is more accurate. So now let's go look at how you can make this measurement if you don't have a four wire multimeter. We already saw one method, which is to use a power supply. 
in the previous measurement, we determined the resistance by applying a well-controlled voltage and current, and then measuring the voltage across just the resistor. The downside to this method is you do need a power supply, two DMMs, and probably a calculator. Oh, and if you're trying to measure something like the 100 milliohm resistor I showed at the beginning, with one volt applied, it has to handle 10 amps or 10 watts. That's why I use the 1 ohm instead of the 100 milliohm for the power supply example. Another option is to use the relative function of a 2R multimeter. In order to use this one, connect your leads together and then hit the relative button. The meter will drop to zero. At this point, the meter is using math to subtract the resistance of the leads from the measurement. Now when the leads are connected to the resistor, the meter shows a measurement similar to the 4-wire method. So then why do we even bother talking about the 4-wire capability? Well, the Kelvin or four wire connection is far more reliable and consistent than using relative mode. For example, here I have two pointed leads. Watch how much the measurement changes depending on where the leads make physical contact. The relative function cannot compensate for these variable differences. Here's another example. Just by moving my leads from one resistor to another and then back again, my initial measurement is different from the current measurement. Something is causing a slight change and I don't know what it is. Four wire measurements are handy when you need to measure very small resistances accurately. Part of the reason I wanted to make this episode is that people sometimes use a multimeter like the Multicomp Pro and wonder what the heck are these extra banana jacks for? Well, now you should know. Now to address when you should use the four wire method versus either relative or the power supply or, or when it's even necessary, I measured a couple of resistors to compare the results. From this data, anything over 100 ohms is fine with two wires. From one ohm to 100 ohms, four wire helps, but isn't necessary. For anything below one ohm, you don't really have a choice. You need to use the four wire method. In a case like my 100 milliohm example, I have an obvious need for the four wire measurement. But what about you? Have you ever needed to make a four wire measurement or did you know before this video why you should have been measuring with four wires instead of two? If so, let me know over on the Element 14 community. There's a link in the description. Remember, that really is the best place to ask me questions because I'm more likely to see them and it is much easier to give a detailed response. In addition to asking questions over on Element 14, you'll find show notes for this episode. They include links to the products shown in this video and some DIY four wire projects I found from Element 14 community members. While you're there, check out videos from other Element 14 Presents hosts and the Project 14 Design Contest where you can win stuff for entering projects. I'm the Bald Engineer and I thank you for watching. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's time for me to get back to making Kelvin measurements on my electronics workbench. <laughs>